those little birds are off again. Okay, here's another whilst we're on the subject of drill centering. Um, again, this uh, shell end mill came in useful. And that had to be used. The only way I could do it was setting up the uh, machining in a vertical slide and setting up with the shell end mill and the spindle of the headstock. So what I've got here is this big chunk that was made in 91. So that's 22 years old. Tiny bit of corrosion. Now that piece is uh, uh, 3.4. I guess it was a three and a half inch piece originally. Big chunk that I had. So what we did with that was um, like with the little one, this little fella, you set the, uh, having got the block pre-machined, we set it up so we could uh, make passes and get the V-cut. Beyond that, I guess really it's fairly straightforward, but I know it took quite a long time to make. We got four studs, we got four little clamping rings. These are just turned out of some uh, half inch. Oh gosh, my eyes ain't so good. No, it's five eighths. I thought it was a bit bigger than that. Bit of five eighths turned down, knurled. Talking about knurling, I've got an interesting knurling thing to show you at another stage. So we got the V block. We centre drilled this whilst it was in the three jaw and that's tapped through and through three eighths I think no it isn't, more than that this is a big coarse thread oh, I can't even remember what that thread is you know when you make stuff that long ago oh, it's nearly three quarter and then this was, uh, I made a set of about three or four Morse tapers. I just machined the blanks and left them with spare material. And this was probably one of them. It's got no tang on it. So I machined that for number two Morse. And then we put the uh, thread on there. I can't believe that. I know it's half inch. What am I talking about? Three quarter. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, half inch. That's a coarse thread. Forget what it is. And that screws into the back of this block, which we can tighten. And then we've got uh, two holes with thread. I forget what the heck I did those for some purpose. <laughs> it's so long since I've used it. Bear in mind I've I've been over here 13 years, brought as much stuff with me as I could which was an incredibly large amount and uh, the only live machining I've done is um, in recent times anyway was making a camera steady and uh, I'll put, try remember to put a link to that where I had to machine some pieces for bearings so the rest of this, four studs, and then we got two of these, just little pieces of flat bar, drilled in the middle to take um, holding, holding pieces, little hook in the end, so those go on. And these go on here. And then the final thing, which again is slightly similar to what we did on the uh, little little one. Can't get my thread started today, it's ridiculous. So if I put a piece of material in here, I don't know, just pick something at random. 
I forget what the maximum size works out at. It's not that huge. I think this is it's going to be too big. Yeah, I use other methods when it's bigger. Oh, there's a piece of scrap. Oh, the other thing, which I haven't put in yet. Uh, distance piece for setting length. And that's got a little lock screw underneath. Just turned out of rough stuff, bit of knurling on it. So that's to set my distance. In fact, this top one, I think, I think is the same diameter as uh, on the small block. So those longer pieces I showed you, I can put on here. So we ima imagine, of course, this is a, this is in the uh, tailstock. So we're getting close to the max size here, just about. It'll take about an inch material. Oh yeah, that's one piece. One piece in. There's the other one. Get that all the way up. Slot it in. You get the general idea. And then finally screw screw these down. And that locates the work nice and solid. This is a heavy piece. Uh, it's done some good work and I never regret making it. So there you are. There's another of the gadgets or gizmos. I don't think I could have bought anything quite like it. Anyway, it served a good purpose and I'm glad I've still got it. Just finishing off with a closer look because uh, I wasn't zoomed in very much before. So there you are. Just a big chunk of steel, which serves a good purpose. And well, whilst I did that, <laughs> let's just substitute. Closer look at that one. Let me turn it round a smidgen. Well, here's another item in the gadget category. Uh, starting a tap is always a bit of a problem, or potentially, and the thing you want to do is to start it absolutely true. Once you've got a couple of turns, <clears throat> then you can get your tap range out and finish by hand. But this was just one of the ways that um, to use in the drill press to uh, get things lined up and started. So what we got here, we've got a piece of solid which we've bored out and uh, threaded in here, a couple of bars screwed in to give a T-bar, and then inside we've got this piece, it's got a little piece screwed on the end. Now that's a close fit, up through there. Okay. And then we've got a separate piece here to close that off. What this does, when we get the final piece in, it makes it almost airtight. There you are. Barely see the join on there. And then we've got this little fella to go in here, which is a locking. Oops. Honestly, can I get my thread started today? That's a little narrow piece which just locks the position. And then finally, a spare Jacob's chuck. I think this one goes to, uh, it's only about 3 eighths. Sounds politely. Still blowing a gale outside, gosh. near the end of May when I'm doing this. 
And although it's sunny, it sure is windy. <coughs> Let's just put a in here just so that it looks more authentic. I'm going to put this in the drill press and just show you what it's doing. So there we are, all you've got to do here is imagine that we've put our uh, tapping uh, piece in there. It's locked up undo it. Now yeah, we've only got about an inch of travel and the smaller diameter at the top is actually so it'll go in a smaller chuck if needed but usually I use this uh, size. So there you are that is purely going to not very good light is it? That's going to drop into the beginning of your hole and then all you've got to do is work that round with a little bit of pressure and then once you've got it started, bring it back out and finish your work piece by hand or any other way you want to do it. <coughs>